I preached a couple of sermons on what would Jesus say. First of all, to Madonna. Secondly, what would Jesus say to Mother Teresa? I thought this would be a great Sunday to preach on what would Jesus say to you and me, Jeff? It's not a bad idea to think about that. One day, one day we're going to stand before the Lord and he's going to say something to us, Charlie. That is Charlie, and you got a tie on today. You never wear a tie to church, Charlie. Huh? I, nice to see that. I, I can tell you, buddy, you have that same hairdo, but I could find... If you know Charlie Pak Choi, and you know his hairdo just never changes. And I believe that a part of getting us ready for the holidays... I mean, they're coming, folks, and they're coming in a rush, okay? Part of my responsibility, I think part of every pastor's responsibility, is to get people ready. Because we get, we get caught up and lost in, in all the action and all the panic and all of the pressure, and we have a hard time concentrating on the things we need to concentrate on in order to maximize the opportunities that are out there. And I think it's really neat. The pilgrims did us a wonderful thing in doing what they did in starting Thanksgiving. And somebody says they didn't really start it. Well, they did kind of. They weren't sure they were, but they did kind of. And we kind of gather around and, and begin to give thanks. And we begin to think about the goodness of God to us. And I picked two verses out of Hebrews chapter 13. Verses 15 and 16 out of that chapter, your assignment's to read Psalm 100. I'll tell you more about that later. But Hebrews 13, verses 15 and 16 read like this. With Jesus' help, we will continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God by telling others of the glory of his name. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have with those in need, for such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. Simple statement. With Jesus' help, we will continually offer sacrifice of praise to God. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. That same word shows up two times in that little section of Scripture. And I begin to think about that word sacrifice, and as I think about it, I think it's at the core of what we have as believers in Jesus Christ. We're not just some religious group. We're a group out here that is tied together because of the sacrifice of Jesus on our behalf. He laid aside all his rights and his privileges in heaven as the very Son of God, the unique Son of God, as the creator of the universe, he laid it all aside, and he came to this planet and took upon himself the form of human flesh and became a man. Went through all of the pressures of growing up in a family with siblings. Went through all of the pressure of growing up in a little town called Nazareth where there was a whole lot of talk in that time that he was the bastard child of Joseph and Mary. And then he stepped into a place of public ministry. And for three and a half years, he declared the mercy and the grace of God and declared himself to be the Savior of the world and declared himself to be the sent one from God, the Messiah, the one that had been promised for hundreds and hundreds of years. And he came to give himself on our behalf. And then he went to that cross and he sacrificed himself for our sins. And then, thank God, he arose from the dead out of there to guarantee to us eternal life. Sacrifice. It's at the center of everything Jesus Christ did for us. 
And if I see it at the center of what he did for us, and I am his follower and his child because I put my faith in him, then I have a responsibility to understand what it is to sacrifice consistently in my life, not now and again, but continually find myself in an attitude and an act of sacrifice to the Lord. And this verse gives me some clear instruction. With Jesus' help, with Jesus' help, we will continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God. Now look at those things. Start off with this. Not, not just occasionally. Not just this Thursday. Not just when you're with your salt group. Not just when you're with the choices bunch. Not just when you're with your Timothy leader. We will continually, wherever we are, we will continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God by doing what? By telling others of the glory of his name. Question. I want you to think back over Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Last six days. I take them in that order because that's the order they just went by in, see? Did you find yourself continually offering a sacrifice of praise to God by telling others of the glory of the name of Jesus? Did you find that happening in your life? Or do you have to sit here and say, well, I was with my salt room Tuesday night. Well, we had a wonderful time. And what it says, continually. That crowd you are with that needs to know the Lord, that has no one else in their circle to tell them about Jesus Christ, in that situation, did you look for and pray for and then take opportunities that came up to do that? With Jesus' help. See, that's the starting point. With Jesus' help, you make a plan. God, I'm really willing to talk. Help me to pay attention and look for opportunities to make the right kind of move at the right time and watch the Spirit of God to bring those opportunities out and to tell them about a God who loves them and forgives sin and gives them new life. See, we've, we've talked about a lot of things this week in this community. We've talked about whether or not the Bulldogs could rise up and beat Colorado State. A whole lot of talk went on this last week. And by switch, they almost did it. They almost did it. They had a great game. Wonderful to wrap up the season playing that well in the home stadium. We talked about it a lot. Some of you spent a lot of time this week talking about Newt Gingrich and how he's going to do. We talked about a lot of things. Question is, you're a child of God. Did you find yourself continually offering a sacrifice of praise to God by telling others the glory of his name? Or are you just kind of running down slick willy? It's easy to get in all those conversations without ever looking and realizing we have been called to something else. You'd be surprised to know that late last night I was watching ESPN. You know, I'm not much of a sports buff, but once in a while I get stuck on that channel. And they were giving the scores from all over the country, and then they made the announcement that the biggest sports news of the day was that Coach Bill McCartney coach of the University of Colorado Buffaloes had announced that January 3rd he is through after that bowl game is over with, he is done. And I listened to five different sportscasters talk about this and talk about what this is all about. What does this mean? Most of them were saying, ah, he'll be back. Probably he's thinking about that job over there in Michigan. His roots are kind of in the Midwest. He'd like to be over there and rebuild a program. Coaching's in his blood. He can't quit this. And then one guy, Lee Corso, kind of surprised me. He said, I want to tell you guys something. I don't agree with you. 
He said, this man has found all the success you want to find in his field. He stops. He's made a very good living. He is set for life financially. It just could be that he now is more interested in significance than he is in success. I said, holy smoke, the guy sounds like Fred Smith. You guys went to the men's conference know exactly what I'm talking about. The need for significance rather than the need for success because success always says, i got to have some more. Significance says, I am someone in God's sight because I'm doing God's work. He never carried it any further than he said there's the possibility that he's found something that has brought great significance to him. And that's why he's stepping out of coaching. I don't think he'll be back. And then one young fellow said, if you've been following the career of Coach McCartney, you know that he's big in an organization called Promise Keepers. It's designed for men. The guy went on laying this out. Who's surprised? Designed for men. Thousands of men have been involved in it. I mean, over a, a quarter of a million men in six different stadiums total came to Promise Keepers, and there's great music out there, and there are great plans out there. And he said, it just could be that Coach McCartney is going to give the rest of his life to influence the lives of men on this other level. See, that's my belief. Significance has come, and it's far larger than success. And even though you may never coach a major league team of any kind, if you have stopped looking for significance, if you've decided you're going to find it in success, you're as foolish as the others who continue to look for it, like that I read out of Psalm 49. The significance comes when we pay attention to the Word of God and continually offer our sacrifice of praise to God by telling others of the glory of His name. As some of you sitting here, once upon a time you started Timothy. You flaked out. For one reason or another, you couldn't handle it. Quit. Many of you have been through the Timothy program. You've never had the courage to pick up on anyone and take them through and teach them what you know. Some of you have been promising for years you're going to go through Timothy. You've never made that move. You're continually, you're going to find time later, but right now you're pursuing something else. And yet you name the name of Christ. He is your Savior. You know you're on your way to heaven, but you've never come to the place where you said, with Jesus' help, I'm going to continually offer my sacrifice to praise to God by telling others the glory of his name. Friend, it is high time. It is high time that you stop the procrastination on this issue of life and move it up the priority scale where it gets on top and began to take care of the things of the soul and find the significance that your soul searches for and has not found as yet. In verse 16, don't forget to do good. Did you do anybody any good this week? I think it's good to stop and check up. I, I don't know. There's some habits of life that are good for us. One of them is when you put your head on the pillow, it's good to think about that day and what did you accomplish and what did you do that was godly and whose life did you touch in a manner that caused them to say, somebody did me some good today. What did you do this week? That was good. Don't forget to do good. We get so doggone busy, we forget to do good. It's easy. Don't forget to do good and to share what you have with those in need for such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. Now, if you don't put practical handles on this stuff, you've missed what fun preaching is all about. I always love to send folks out the door thinking, dog, gone his hide. He put the heat on me again. Old Virgil, he has encouraged me for years to do that. He says, man, keep it on. You think about 
sharing what you have with those in need. Simple stuff. Let me tell you the simple stuff where we just don't participate. Simple stuff. This morning when I rolled into this parking lot, the first thing I did was wheel in over there, reach into the back seat, and pull out a grocery sack that was crammed full of last week's newspapers. You know, last week's newspapers, yesterday's newspaper, aside from lying in the bottom of the birdcage, it isn't worth anything. Well, some days it isn't worth anything when it arrives, let alone when it leaves. And the Marines have come along and said, help us. Bring us your newspapers for these several weeks, and we'll turn them into money, and we'll help a lot of kids. And you know, there's some of you that you are so busy, you can't even find your way to put that brown paper sack in the garage and put the papers in there every day and then throw it in the car on Sunday morning and bring it to the church. Simple stuff. Those are discards. There's no sacrifice in that, my friend. That's just an opportunity. In the early service, I talked about needing some bell ringers to go down there to a fashion fair and, and got shots and then ring the bell. And I, I got enough pressure up that we got all of them signed up and got some spares. And you don't even have to think about that. Just to remember, when you go by, they ask that person, are you from Northwest Church? Hey, a lot of bell ringers don't go anywhere to church. Anytime you see a bell ringer, ask them, do you go to whatever place they're stationed? We may increase the crop here. You can't tell. You'll find some folks don't go anywhere, and they haven't had an invitation from anyone for a long time. Just use it that way, will you? And put something in the kettle, by the by. Share what you have with those in need for such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. See, today is Christmas Star Bazaar. It's a wonderful time. That Family Life Center, Center is set up so beautifully. We've had so many people that have worked like mad to put together a wonderful display in there of the various countries we're going to touch through Christmas Star Bazaar. But it doesn't work until you go into the building and look around and say, well, i got a bunch of old golfing buddies that I need to send something to them. And instead of sending them those goofy golf gifts, I'm going to send something in their name somewhere overseas. Or I'm going to send something in their name down here to help Steve Morris and the crowd at World Impact or County out of Valley Teen Ranch or wherever. Great opportunity. Great opportunity if you'll take the time to go through there and take that. See, such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. I just choose to believe that every person in this building really wants to please God. Here it is. Such sacrifices are very pleasing to him. Three assignments. Three assignments. He said, whoa. Three assignments. Number one, read Psalm 100 every day. It's a little short one. Let me read it for you. Psalm 100, real easy. Shout with joy before the Lord, O earth. Obey him gladly. Come before him singing with joy. Try to realize what this means. The Lord is God. He made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Go through his open gates with great thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is always good. He is always loving and kind. And his faithfulness goes on and on to each succeeding generation. Read that every day in your personal life. Second assignment, read that Thursday, wherever you are having dinner, read that to the crowd before dinner or after dinner, probably not in the middle of dinner. You know, you know Thursday's a frustrating day for a lot of folks. Women work for days, and in 22 minutes, we destroy it. <laughs> and then we look at them like they're supposed to go out there and clean up the mess. Huh? You can bring a little happiness and a little joy if you'll take time to say, folks, I'm on orders from my, I mean, if you're at your Uncle Louie's house, he's the worst atheist in the world. Say, Uncle Louie, my pastor told me i got to read Psalm 100. Just hang on. This won't hurt much. <laughs> and read it to the crowd. Thirdly, be here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Not for me. For you. You need that preparation time to be ready to move into the holiday season. Thanksgiving Day and then the onrush of things 
right on in and through the Christmas season. You need that time to get apart with the people of God and share in celebrating the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on our behalf. Read Psalm 100 every day. Read it Thursday to the crowd you have dinner with and show up Wednesday night here. I want to see this building packed with people sharing in that communion time and letting God bless them and fill up their own soul. Bow with me and let's pray. Our Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day and the clarity of your word. No need for us to stumble around and wonder what you mean. It's so clear, so beautifully laid out. And I pray that we would be learning how to respond to you and how to be involved in the continual sacrifice of praise by telling others of the greatness of the glory of God Almighty and his Son, Jesus Christ. And then that we would go and share with others who have so much need. For such sacrifices are well-pleasing to you, our Father. We acknowledge with gratitude how wonderful you've been to us. Now help us to share with great joy. And we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen.